Okay. Um, welcome to your third session. It's not the fourth session, it's the third session where we're going to discuss measures of variation. Um, so today, because measures of variation uses a very complex calculations, I'm going to demo on the full, um, on the calculator, sorry. I'm going to demo on the calculator on how you can use your calculator to answer some of this because um, instead of using formulas, then you can rely on your statistical calculator or scientific calculator to do some of the um, calculations as well. So in May, these are the topics that we're going to be discussing. We're going to look at the quartiles, then the basic probability, um, basic concepts of probabilities, and then we're going to look at the basic concepts of discrete probabilities, and then we go into doing the binomial discrete probabilities and also the Poisson one. And that will conclude our May sessions. So please. Don't miss anything. If you're doing 1501, those who are doing 1501, what we do not cover uh, when we when we do discrete probabilities are the marginal probabilities. But if you need help with those, feel free to ask as well. Okay, so let's start with this week's session. Do you have any question, comment before we even begin with the session for today? Are there any questions? No, my. Okay, please remember also to complete the register. I've posted the link on the chat. So, like I said, today we're going to be looking at measures of variation and the requirement is a formula and your calculator. Um, and always remember that we use the Newman's error method uh, or error prompts to analyze the problem that we are given so that we can understand what we are given and then be able to do some calculations as well. Okay, so when we talk about measures of variation, we talk about things like uh, your range of variation, your standard deviation and coefficient of variation. So what does this mean? What is measures of variation? Sometimes it's also referred to measures of dispersion. What it does, it gives you how spread your data is or the variability of your data or how far apart your data is from the mean. So that is your measure of variation. It gives you those um, type of um, information in terms of the spread, in terms of the variability, in terms of um, the, the structure of your data, how, uh, whether, how far apart is uh, your, 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 your data is from the mean, and we know that the mean is a measure of central location. So when we do some calculation on the measure of variation, we do use the mean so often. That is why the mean is the most commonly used measure of central location, because from now on there, we're going to be referring to the mean so often for most of the things that we do. OK, so. How do we then calculate this? So like with measures of variation as well, you can calculate this because these are, are parameters or statistics. So if they, if you calculate these measures from a sample, remember that those will be your, your statistic. If you calculate this from your population, this will be your parameters. So what is the range? A range gives you how far apart your data set is. So it, it is the difference between your largest value and your smallest value. So if I have this data set where I have the bubbles, those represent my data. So I have one 
and my highest value is 13. So in order to find the range of this data set, I say 13 minus one, which is equals to 12, and that gives me the range. And that's how you calculate the range. Use the following information below. And to answer the question. So we were given the data and the question is, a range is that score above or below which 50% of the scores fall. Is this correct or is this true or false? Remember what I just said? What is the range? The range is the difference between the highest and the, the highest value and the lowest value. And what did we learn from the measures of central location the last time we met? We learned that the median splits the data between uh, in half. So 50% of the data will fall below and 50% of the data will fall above. So the statement, therefore, it is incorrect because the range is the difference between the highest and the lowest, not the score below and above 50%. That is the media. So the answer here will be false. So if that is the type of a question that you would get in the exam or in your assignment. One of the other measure of uh, variation we said is the variance. Um, and also we said also we have the standard deviation. Now, the variance and the standard deviation are similar to one another because the standard deviation is the square root of your variance or the variance is your square of your standard deviation. The variant we do not interpret and we normally don't use it so often, but it is the average of the square deviation of the values of the mean and we can calculate it for the sample. We can calculate it for the population. For the sample variance, the formula is S squared. Remember, for the sample, we always use normal letters, alphabetical letters. For population, we use Greek letters. So the sample variance is given by the sum of your observed value minus the mean or the sample mean squared divided by n minus 1. You need to know how to calculate this because what the sum it means, it is a summation. It means adding up. So it means you're going to add your observation minus the mean squared plus another observation minus the mean squared plus another observation minus the mean squared plus like that. It is the sum. It means it's adding together and everything divided by n minus one where n is your sample size. The population variance on the other hand is represented by a sigma squared and it's almost similar to what the sample variance is, but the difference here, it is divided by the capital letter N. And that is how you will differentiate between your sample variance and your standard deviation variance. So this population variance, the sum of your observation minus the population mean squared divided by N. So when it comes to the standard deviation, Standard deviation we can interpret because the value we get when we do the calculation, we bring it back to the same value or the same unit as the original data set and therefore it allows us to be able to interpret what that value means in relation to the mean. And it's also one of the most commonly used measure of variation because from now on, even when we do the hypothesis testing, when we do the confidence interval, we're going to be using 
the standard deviation, standard deviation, standard deviation, and the mean. What standard deviation shows us, it shows the variation about the mean. So it will tell you how far apart your data is from the mean. And it also, like I said in the beginning, it is the square root of your variance. So if you calculated the variance and you are asked to calculate the standard deviation, you don't have to go again and do the same calculation again. That takes forever. You just take the square, uh, the square root of the variance and that will give you the standard deviation. So sample standard deviation is denoted by S and S and a population standard deviation will be denoted by a sigma, as you can see. How do we then calculate this? Going to calculate the standard deviation. Calculating the standard deviation, remember the formula. For the sample standard deviation is your S is equals to the square root of your the sum of your observed value minus the mean squared divided by n minus one. That is the formula that we need to use. So given the data set that we have, which starts from 10 and it is in order anyway, from 10 until 24, we can count how many there are. That will be our sample size. There are eight of the data values that are here displayed. We can also go and calculate the mean because we will require the mean in the formula. The mean is the sum, remember? The mean is the sum of all observations divided by how many they are. So you add all the observations and you divide them by 8 and that will give you 16. Now we need to substitute into the formula in order to calculate the standard deviation. Our x is all our x observation. So we start with 10. 10 minus the mean of 16 squared plus 12 minus the mean of 16 squared plus 14 minus the mean of 16 squared plus until we get to 24 minus the mean of 16 squared. And that gives us 130 if we add them, but we need to divide by n minus 1, which is 8 minus 1, which gives us 7. So the top part, when you solve that, you will get 130 divided by 7. The 130 divided by 7, it is your sample variance. It is your sample variance and it is the same as 18.5714 or 18.57 if I leave it to two decimal. If I take the square root of the answer of 18.57, I will get 4.3095, which is my standard deviation, which shows me the measure of the average value scattered around the mean, which means my data is 4.3 different away from the mean or far apart from the mean. And that tells me what the standard deviation is. Any questions before we start with uh, any of the activities or exercises? But before we do the activities and exercises, because we're talking about the variation and all that, so that when we go to do the activities and exercises, you are able to, to do all of them and I don't have to come back to theories and all that. Let's look at another measure of variation, which is a coefficient of variation, which measures uh, the relative variation and we always represent it in a percentage form and it shows your variation rela relative to the mean and can be used to compare the variability of two or more data sets. And this usually it's, it's used by the people who work in the risk uh, department. Like for example, if you work in 
uh, an investment company, you will most likely use the coefficient of variation when you do some analysis to check which of the portfolio you want to suggest your clients to use or to invest in. And you can use this measure also to guide you in terms of that, in terms of highlighting which one has the high risk, which one has the low risk in order for to make sure that your 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 customers or your clients get the return on investment on the money that they save with you. Let's look at this example. Stock A has an average price of last year of 50 rand and the standard deviation of 5 rand. So they would have took the stock A for the whole year and calculated what was the average, which is the mean, what was the, the mean average price for last year, which they found that it was 50 rand. And they would have calculated what was the standard deviation, which they found that was 5 rand. If we calculate the coefficient of variation, which is your standard deviation divide by your sample mean multiplied by 100, then we take the 5 rent, divide by 50 rent, and multiply by 100, then we get 10%. We can also look at stock B, which had an average price of 100 rand and the standard deviation of 5 rent. We also substitute your standard deviation of 5 rand divided by your mean of 100 and multiply that by 100 and we find that the, the variation is uh, 5%. Looking at the two results of 10% and 5%, we can deduce that both the stock have the same standard deviation, but stock B is less variable relative to its stock, um, it, uh, relative to its price. Because if you see your price of 100, uh, it means the, um, the prices last year were almost close to one another um, of an average of 100 rent um, the rest of the, for the whole year. As compared to stock A, where there is a 10% a 10 percent um, variation in the uh, prices uh, as compared to uh, in the prices of last year as well. So if this was, for example, a, an investment portfolio, I would invest in stock B because then stock B would have more returns. Um, than in stock A where the uh, variability is way high as well, because then it means there are a lot of fluctuations that are happening on there. But if I have, um, if I'm that person who wants high returns, who, who plays in the risk uh, category, like I like to take risks, then I will invest in stock A because then it means on some months, I might capitalize and make more money. On some months, I might lose more money. So, but if you are conservative, you will um, you will only stick with stock B. Okay, that is measures of variation. Now, I know that the last time we met, we discussed the mean and the standard deviation. I'm not going to ask you to do this question, but um. We also spoke about the, the distribution of the data. I'm not going to stop, talk too much about the distribution of the data, but just to let you know that um, your measures of variation can also help in terms of identifying the peak of your data, whether is your, um, your, your data set a ketosis or liptoketic, or is it a platyketic or is it a mesoketic in terms of using some of the measures of variations? But you don't have to know all of this for your module, but that is just for interest sake as well. And also 
because this is skills literacy. So you just need to make sure that you also have an understanding of some of these skills uh, or some of these knowledges. Um, OK, so now before we go on to doing a lot of exercises, like I said, I'm going to demo or show you how to calculate the measures of variations using your calculator. On the screen right now, we do have a 12 monthly sales bicycle sold by a bicycle dealer, and we do have all the, 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 the monthly sales, uh, 12 of them, and we are asked to calculate the mean, the variance, the standard deviation, and the coefficient of variation. I hope you do have your calculators with you uh, because we're going to use calculators to calculate this. I also have the steps that you see on the uh, on on the and on the red dotted thingy. Eh? Those are the steps if you have a financial calculator. If you have a financial calculator, those are the steps that you can use to calculate the mean, the standard deviation, and the coefficient of variation. Okay. Now, those who have a Casio or a sharp other than the sharp financial calculator, let's see. Let me go to, yeah, let me come here. I want to know what type of calculators do you all have? Um, you can post it on the chat if you don't want to, to unmute so that I can I can have an idea because I don't want to also waste time um, using uh, another calculator and then you don't have that calculator. Um, I've got sharp cash your and HP 10 B. OK, you have sharp uh, and a cash you and HP. OK, so the cash that you have has a fraction, uh, the fraction. Let me open the cash Does it look not that? OK. I will still have to open my cash calculator. Just a sec. I don't know. I closed it by mistake. I can just open it. Does it look like this? Does it have a? A fraction thingy. Let's open another one. Just give me a second. Uh, others, what type of calculators do you have? Hello, this is Liz. Eh? Yes. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm fine. I have a sharp. You have a sharp calculator and and Casio. Okay, so you have a Casio. So I think uh, I will show both. So your Casio calculator does it look like this? Does it have a fraction button? Yes, it has. Okay, and your sharp calculator does it look like this? Does it have the green? Uh, things written on it, like like alpha, way, yeah, like alpha in in green and so forth, and the green buttons. You see where I'm hovering? Where it's blue, it's turning blue. You see where my and, on my calculator where I'm 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 clicking the thing is yeah. blue. On top there are weights written in green. You see those. Mm. Yes, so those who are using the sharp, we're going to use the sharp calculator. Those who are using the casio, we're going to use the casio. Because I cannot do this at the same time, we will have to deal with one set of a calculator, uh, and then we will move to the next calculator. Please bear with me. 
So we're going to start with the Casio, Casio calculator. So let's open. So does the HP work similar to this too? Um, the HP also works similar, but HP is more complex because um, I'm not going to touch on the HP because you said you have the Casio and the Sharp, right? Unless if you don't have those two calculators and you have only HP. Uh, mostly I'm using HP. But at the moment, do you have a Casio or a Sharp? Because HP is more complex. I've got three, it's three of them. You have three of them. So for example, now for statistics, you are only going to use either the sharp calculator or the Casio calculator for your financial, uh, then you can use your HP, All right? Yeah, but I have HP on. Ah, you only have, you see the challenge I have with an HP because I don't have an, a, a, an emulator for HP. It makes it difficult for me to show you how to use your calculator to do this. What I will do, those who, are, who have an HP calculator, I will send you a documentation that you can follow um, on the same exercise that we are doing. Okay. Right? Because I don't okay. have that with, the, I don't have um, the simulator, like the calculator that I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so let's do this. Just need to make sure that this moves a little bit to <coughs> the side. I'm not going to write on the. Um, just give me a second. I just want to. Okay, sorry, I needed to go close the door. Okay, so let's deal with the calculator thing. I hope you are able to see my screen. I've tried to make it bigger. Okay, so now, those who have a Casio calculator, you will have to write the steps as I talk. Don't, don't try and do it. We will repeat the same steps again. Don't try and do it. You write while I speak. You write the things that I am showing you. So the first thing that you need to do is to switch on your calculator, right? Then you need to press on the mode function, which is that button that you have there. Different Casio comes with different views on here so you will have to tell me if your casio is different to my one so that i can guide you to the right uh, menu on your calculator as well so don't get left behind on anything so once you click on the mode the menu will pop up we need to go to stat sta so depending on your calculator you need to press the number that corresponds to STAT to the state function. So here on my calculator, it's two. So I'm going to press two. Then I have another new menu. If you look at this new menu, I have one which has one minus var and I have two, which is A plus BX. Now for today's session, we're only going to use one, one, one minus var when we do regression we're going to use two a plus bx so for today we're going to only use one one minus var so you're going to click one as number one corresponds with the first number and you will get a table that looks like this now it means you're going to enter your data 
into the table. So your data are those numbers 10, 6, 5, 10, 9. It is very important that you enter your data as you see it on the screen as well. So let's in, uh, enter our data. So how do you enter your data on the Casio? We're going to type 10. And then you're going to press equal sign. It will place the data into the table and then we move on. Six equal sign. Five equal sign. Ten equal sign. Nine equal sign. Seven equal sign. Ten equal sign. Nine equal sign. Six equal sign. Eight equal sign. Six equal sign and six equal sign. I know that they said there should be 12. When I look at the table already, when I get to six, the last six, it should say it corresponds to 12. Therefore, it means I have captured all the data. Now, once you have captured your data, you can press AC button. Okay. I hope you have written that down to some extent so that you can always remember that. Remember, it's mode two for stat and one for the table. Then you capture your data, 10 equal, six equal, five equal, 10 equal, nine equal, seven equal, 10 equal, nine equal, six equal, eight equal, six equal, six equal. And you have captured your data. And once you have captured your data, then you can press the AC button. Your data will be stored on your calculator. It's not lost. If you want to see your data, you can press on this STAT button. We need, in order for us to bring that button up, we need to press shift. So you're going to press shift first. You press the shift button and then you press button number one and it will bring a menu for your statistical analysis. The first one will give you the type of the data that you have. Number two will give us the table that we completed. Can you see that? There is our table. And I'm going to press AC again, go back to shift, and then go back to stat one. Now you have number three and number four. Number three gives you the sum. Remember on your mean, let's hope my pen can write on here. Remember that the mean is the sum of your observation over N. So in order for us to know what the sum is, we can use number three to get the sum. So if you press button three, and there you will have sum x squared, but we are looking for the sum, which is your number two, and then we just press two and then you press equal and that will give us our mean 92 divided by 12 and we can calculate that by say 92 divided by 12 which is equals to 7.67 7.67 you don't have to do it that way so shift that remember now I showed you where to find the sum, which is just the summation, but number four will give you the variations. So if I press number four button for var, and there I will have my descriptive statistics, which includes also the sample size, the mean, the sample mean, so the sample mean and the population mean on the calculator are one and the same thing. They use the X bar. So population mean, sample mean, we use the X bar. 
Number three will give you your population standard deviation. And number four will give you your sample standard deviation. Always remember that. So let's look at our mean, which is number two. If I press two and I press equal, and as you can see, I got the same answer as I had when I calculated things manually. Going back, every time you want to go and calculate a statistic or a parameter, you use shift one and the menu will come and then you will choose whichever value you want to calculate, whether are you calculating the, the variance, the standard deviation and so forth. The mean and the max, if I click on five, it will give me the mean of the data set. If I click number one, I know that the mean of the, the minimum value of my data set is five. And if I click on number two, and it will be 10 because my highest value is 10. So you can go and get that and you can calculate your um, your range as well from here. So how do we calculate the rest of these other things? So to calculate, we're going to start with the standard deviation. The first one you need is the standard deviation because on the calculator and the, the menu that you have on the VAR, you have the standard deviation, not the variance. This is the standard deviation. So we're going to calculate the sample standard deviation because they told us this is a sample of 12 monthly sales. So it means we're going to press number four. If they would have said, consider a population of 12 monthly sales, then we will use the population standard deviation. Okay, so number four and equal. And that gives us one comma one comma eight eight seven. And that is the standard deviation. Remember our standard deviation is S. If we need to calculate the variance, our variance is S squared. So it means we can take 1,87 and square that answer, and that will give us 3.5. Let's see. So if we press square button, and you press the square button to get the variance and you press equal and it gives us 3.51. 3.51 and that's how you use your calculator. Now, how do we calculate the coefficient of variation? Easy to calculate because we do have the standard deviation and the mean. So how you will calculate this on your calculator, your case, your calculator, you will go and say shift. And you will go and press button number one. Let's do that. Uh, sorry. Uh, yes, so it's shift because we know that this is your standard deviation over the sample mean multiply by 100. That is what coefficient of variation is. So we're going to start shift button number one, and then we press button number four. And then you press four, and you press four again for the standard deviation. And you press division, because it's divide by, and you press shift. So you're going to press divide by, and then you go back, shift one and four and two and equal. And you can see there it says standard deviation divided by X equal 
and that will give us the answer and multiply that by 100. And that will be equals to 24.45. And that is on your Casio calculators. Okay, now let's move to those who are using a sharp calculator. You can also use the, uh, you can use the fraction when you are in the state mode, it will not work. So, and to take back your calculator to normal mode of math mode, you just press mode and then press one, it will take back your calculator to your normal mode and you can use your 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 fractions. Uh, to remember that it's mode two, one for state. Then you put in the data onto your your table by pressing the value equal, the value equal, the value equal, and then when you are done, putting in the value, you go AC and you go shift stat to call the statistics um, analysis functions. And you can select whichever the value you want to do. Let's say you are doing some calculation and you realize that there is no answer when you are calculating. Probably maybe you, you, you inputted the values wrong. You want to go back to the table. You can go to the table. And you can look at your values on the table. And if, let's say, for example, number five is the one that is wrong, you just use your arrow to go to number five and you change number five and you put the correct value for number five and you press equal and it will replace that old value with the new value. And if you notice that you have done the whole table wrong, you can also go and stand using your arrow at the beginning of your table and start capturing all your values. Two equal, four equal, six equal, seven equal, and it will replace all the values. And if you make a mistake on the value, you just use your arrow to go up and delete, and that will be gone. So it works like your computer the same way. So you use the arrow to navigate, there are delete functions you can recapture, you can replace. Because also remember on your on your computer, when you want to change a value, you can highlight it and replace that value by typing a new value. That's what you do. So on the calculator, you do the same. By going to that value, you are highlighting that value. Uh, and somebody's on. Okay, now we're going to help you, Manessa, who's using um, a, a, a Casio calculator. Now, for those who are using a, uh, let's go there. For those who are using a uh, this calculator, which is the HP, you can see also you do have these values here. Can you see them? like your your sum sum y sum of x and your n and there is the mean uh, there is the mean it's written in orange and the standard deviation is written the sample standard deviation and the uh, the population standard deviation so those who are the, the values written in or in in blue you're going to use the upper arrow to reach for them. The button, uh, those that are written in orange, you're going to use the, the orange uh, button to get to them. Now, in order for you to, to start working with this, you need to store your data. And that is where the complexity comes in with this calculator because I am not 100% sure and I don't want to do it right now on here because you need to use some input and some systems or something like that and then capture the data onto your calculator 
and then use this buttons to navigate um, to call the values. But I will send you your um, uh, your document at the end of the session when we are almost done or before well well people are doing some activities i will go and find documentation for you to send uh, to give you so that you can do your activities now those who are using the um, the cash um, not the cash or the sharp financial calculator those are the steps because on your calculator you have the m plus those are the steps but the steps are almost similar to the one that I'm going to show you, which is this this sharp, um, this sharp calculator. So you will have to follow me using your sharp calculators, whether it's financial calculator or it is a cash calculator. So let's put this on the side and I must bring back the same. So with this one, it's going to be a mission and a half to work between the two screens because when I click it will hide my presentation. So let's minimize the presentation. So we already have the the values. We already know what the values are. Okay. Please make sure that you are always muted. Um, <clears throat> Please make sure that you are always muted. OK, so. Those who are using the sharp calculator, yours it's easy because all the values are visible are here. That's the mean. That's the standard deviation for the sample. That's the population standard deviation. Those are your summations, your sum X. Like I showed you the sum X, every value that is written in orange, we use the alpha to reach for those values. Any value that is written in yellow or, or orange, we use the orange, the second function. Green, we use the alpha button. But we need to get your calculator also to state mode. So for you, you will press the mode button. So you must look for the mode button on your calculators. And get my calculator because sometimes the emulator is different to the way it is different to the normal calculator. So look for the mode button and you will have the menu which says zero and one for normal for state. You're going to press one for state and you will have SD line and quad. For today we use SD because we're using only one unit variable. Next time we do linear regression, we'll use line for two variables, uh, two numerical variables. So for today, we're going to press SD, which corresponds to zero. We're going to press zero, and your calculator will be on state mode zero. Now, with your calculator, you will not have the table, but it will tell you every time you put in the value, it will say data set one, like the one on the financial calculator. You would have followed the same steps. So you press the mode button, you press one for state, you press zero for descriptive statistics, which is the SD, and your calculator will say state zero. So depending on which calculator you are looking at, whether it's the financial calculator or is the normal sharp calculator, you will have state zero in front of you. Now, <clears throat> in order for us to capture the data onto our calculators, so those, actually these are the steps for a normal sharp calculator because it has an M plus. So these are for the normal sharp calculator. Those with a financial calculator, instead of M plus, you go going to press E and T, the enter button. There is an E and T button there. That's what you're going to be pressing, the enter button. So how do we press uh, store the data? We do the same. You press the value 10 and then you press the M plus. With the financial calculator, you will press the E and T button. It's on the M plus. Then you continue. It will say data set one. 
you will continue capturing all the data sets until or all the data points until it says data set 12 and then you know that you have captured everything so let's continue 6 m plus 5 m plus you can see that the m plus is there ne? not the m plus that i'm talking about the uh, plus so, five. sorry sis Liz. yes <coughs> we started by entering 10 or 6 10 and then 6 yes okay thank you then 5 then 10 m plus 5 and then 9 m plus 7 m plus 10 m plus 9 M plus six, M plus eight, M plus six, M plus six, M plus. Then I have 12 data set. Now, the challenge with the sharp calculator, because you are unable to go back and look at your data set, you won't know. If you, you enter your data and you see that you are on 13 or 14, then it means there is something that you did wrong. You can clear your calculator by pressing second function and CA. It will clear your stored data and you can start again. 10 M plus 6 M plus 5 M plus 10 M plus 9 M plus 7 M plus 10 M plus 9 m plus 6 m plus 8 m plus 6 m plus and 6 m plus so also those who are using the financial one when you you captured and you see that you are way out or the values they're not getting to 12 you are on number six then it means there is something wrong that you did you just need to do second function ca and second function in the mode so that you clear your calculator. So once you have captured all your 12 data set, you can press the on and off button. Your data is stored in the memory of the calculator. Now you are ready to calculate the mean, the standard deviation and so forth. So now since everything is here in front, I'm going to start also by calculating the sum of X. Sum of X is written in in green and it's on the dot button. So I'm going to press alpha and dot and press equal. And you can see that I get the same answer as we did when we were using the Casio, which is 92. And I can divide 92 by 12. And that is 6.677. That is the mean. Or you can go and find the mean by pressing alpha for equal. And there is the mean. The uh, beauty of using a sharp for financial for statistics calculations is that there is no shift four four one like the whole step that we do when we use the uh, the Casio calculator. The downfall is you can't see the data set. Casio visualizes your data set and it makes it easy for you to see what you are doing as well. So there are pros and cons. So choose whichever, when you, what I will say to those who don't have a Casio or a sharp calculator, I will advise you to go and buy a Casio calculator for the fact that if you're doing any mathematical calculations, you do have this fraction, which makes things easier. Whereas with a sharp calculator, we don't have you don't have this uh, functionality unless if you write you use the sharp right, and you can use those functionalities. Okay, so enough with that. Let's go to the standard deviation because that's the next thing that we need to calculate. You press the on and off, and we press the standard deviation is. Alpha and because it's the sample, uh, sorry, just so press button five. And it's then yes. Uh, I was left somewhere. 
after uh, uh, entering the data, you press on and off. Yes. And then after that, you press alpha. Alpha and whatever you want to calculate. So now we're calculating the standard deviation. So press alpha and button number five and press equal and see if you get the same answer. If you don't get 1.87, it means you did something wrong when you captured the data. You need to go back and, cap and capture the data again by pressing second function mode you clear your calculator just this yes, are you getting me. are you getting 1.87 yeah, let me try to press alpha and button number five oh, no i'm getting it wrong okay so it means you captured your data wrong so you need to press second function and then press the mode button. So second function, mode, and then capture the data again and see if you can get, you get it right. Um, the steps are easy with a, with, um, Let me insert a new slide, a blank one. So with a with a sharp calculator, the steps are easy. So it is mode and mode one and then zero for SD, uh, SD. Zero for SD and your calculator will be ready. And then you just press the values 10, and then you press the M plus, or you press 10 and then press the E and T button. And then you continue doing that. Okay, continue capturing all the values. Once you are done, then you press on, on and off your calculator. To calculate the mean, you just press. So for the mean, you will press alpha, and then you will press button number four for the standard deviation you will press alpha and button number five so now how do we calculate the coefficient of variation which is coefficient of variation which is s divided by the mean multiplied by 100 so you will say <coughs> alpha uh five Divide by alpha four equals and multiply by a, by a hundred. You just do that. So let's calculate the coefficient of variation. So I'm gonna go back there. We know that we got 24.5. Oh, sorry, before we calculate the coefficient of variation. We need to calculate the variance. We know that the variance is the square. You just press the square button, which is the x squared, and it will change to s squared, and then press the equal sign, and you can see that we get 3.51. So that's how easy it is. So in order to get the variance, you calculate first the standard deviation by pressing the standard deviation, and then you press the square. Now let's calculate the coefficient of variation, which is the standard deviation divided by the mean. And we know from our next one, we said it is alpha five for standard deviation divided by alpha four for the mean equals multiply that by 100 equals. 24.45. You can also put it in the bracket. You can say alpha, sorry, alpha 5 divided by alpha 4, close bracket, multiply by 100 equals 
you will still get the same answer, which is 24.45. Or even when you don't close it, because it's a multiplication, both must say division and multiplication have the same priority. You work from left to right. So it will not even make any difference. So alpha 5 divided by alpha 4 multiplied by 100, it will still give you 24.45 because of both mass rule. Okay. And that is how you find the mean, the standard deviation and the coefficient of variation. So let's go back to our presentation. Which one of the following descriptive statistics is not a measure of central location? Let's see if you still remember. What have we used today? You can just unmute and tell me which one is not a measure of central location. Anyone? I think it's the range. It is the range because that's what we were discussing today. The others we discussed the last time we met, and the other one says all of the all of the above measures describe central tendency. No, only the range is not a measure of central tendency. Given the following symbols, identify the symbol that represent a parameter as a measure of a population. We have number A, number B, number C, and number D. We have the mean, the standard deviation, the mean, the standard deviation. So which one, A, B, C, and D, which one represent a parameter or a population, a measure of a population? Which symbol? A and D. It number is two. A. And D, which is option two, because for population parameter, because it's huge, we use the Greek letters. You must always remember that. Use Greek letters. That is a Greek letter. That is a Greek letter. The others are just normal as letters of alphabets that we know. I'm not going to ask you about this. Um, and I think I don't have to ask you about this, but I can ask you to calculate the range of this data set. So the other thing, when you calculate the range, you can sort your data or you can look at your data and say which one is the smallest value and which one is the highest value. But it's always advisable to sort your data from lowest to highest. And if you look at this data set, it looks like it's almost sorted. So calculate the range of this data set. Ninety-seven. And how did you calculate the range? Um two fifty-six minus one fifty-nine. Two fifty-six minus one fifty-nine, which is equals to ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. And that's how you will calculate the range. I'm not gonna ask you to what that the number of observation. I'm gonna assume that some of these things because we did them last time, you know how to answer them. But anyway. Which one of the following statement is correct with regards to the coefficient of variation? So we've just learned about coefficient of variation today, right? And we said it is a relative variation to the mean. Um, and gives you the variations. What else did we talk about? And we, you know, the formula for the coefficient of variation. You know that it is your standard deviation. Trying to write. SD now, standard deviation over the sample mean multiplied by 100. 
Okay, so which one of the following statement is correct with regards to the coefficient of variation? You tell me whether it's one, two, three, four, or five. Is it a measure of location? Is it the difference between the largest and the smallest value? Is it the sample standard deviation squared? Is it the sample standard deviation expressed as a percentage of the mean? Or is it the mean squared? One, two, three, and four. Which one is the correct one? Four. Four is the correct one because I gave you the answer right there. Is the standard deviation expressed as the percentage of the mean? Because it, regardless, because if I multiply 100 by the mean is the same as 100%. A percentage of the mean, divide, uh, standard deviation divided by X bar multiplied by 100. Is it the location? No, it's a variation. So this coefficient of variation it is a measure of variation or measure of dispersion is it the difference between the large and the smallest this is the range definition is it the standard deviation squared this is the variation sample variation some or sample variance why am i calling it variation Sample vari variance. This is a sample variance. And is it mean squared? Nope, it's not mean. It is not mean squared. Okay, consider the following. Uh, consider only the number of the people living with uh, autumn syndromes, uh, ASD. Uh, and the table is given below. So the number of people are 10844, 206, 85, and 57. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Now, this is what we did last week. So it means you need to find the mean, the median, and answer the question, and also find out whether the mode is correct or not. So let's, we're gonna do this one together, and then the next one we're doing it on your own. So which one of the following statement is incorrect? Before I can come and answer this, because I can see that they're asking questions about the mean, the mode. So I can just go and calculate the mean. The sum of all the values, or you can take your calculator and capture all the information on your calculator. And I'm going to go do it as Gonna do it with the Casio to capture the data. Sorry, because I'm hiding all the information. Two and one, and I have 108, 44, 206, 85, and 57. And then AC, and then shift, stat, and and two and equal and I have my mean is 100. I can also double check with my other calculators. Second function CA to clear my calculator from any stored value 108 M plus. 44 and plus 206 and plus 85 and plus 57 and plus and on and off alpha 4 equal I get 100 so it means my mean is 100 I found that finding the median I must first find the median position Remember, n plus 1 divided by 2, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's 5 plus 1 divided by 2, 
which is equals to three because it's six divided by two is three. I need to sort my data from lowest to highest. 44, 57, 85, 108, and 203. So one, two, three, 85. So my median is 85. Now, my mode, looking at the data set, there is no mode, right? Because I can't see any number that repeats itself. Come and answer the question. Number one, two, three, four, and five. The mean and the median are equal. Is that true? Is that correct? No, that's false. That is not correct. The mean is less than the median. That is false. That is also in. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Are we looking for the incorrect one? Probably the statement here was supposed to say what is the, the information that is correct. Sorry, I don't think that is what they intended with this question. OK, so the mode is zero. Is that true or false? It's false. That is also incorrect. There is no mode. That's correct. That is correct. None of the above. That is another option that they like at Unisa to include for just confusing everyone. To say, if I can't find any of this answer, let me just choose option five as my backup. Okay. I hope you already captured your data onto your calculator because the next one is says, what is your standard deviation? I have already my data because I quickly uh, in, uh, included the data on my calculator. I can calculate my standard deviation, but I want to see if you can get it as well. Then let's see. Anyone who already has the answer? Option one, 54.24. Ah, so we do have those who already are on the roll. So you go shift one, and then you go four, four var, and then I'm gonna use, because that is sample standard deviation as they asked. So we're going to press button number four and press equal, that's 64.25. And also on the sharp calculator, we can do the same. Uh, we go alpha and we press the five button and then press equal 64.25. See, easy it is to use your calculator instead of using the formula, because at the moment, if you are going to rely on your formula, remember that your standard deviation is S is equals to the square root of the sum of your observations, which is your observation, minus the mean squared divided by n minus 1. So you would have went and said the square root of 108 minus, what did we say the mean is? 100, right? 100 squared plus 44 minus 100 squared plus until you get to 57 minus 100 squared divided by how many there are? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Divide by 5 minus 1. And you would have found that the answer after doing the whole calculation, you will get, you will get that. So you can see that using your calculator will save you a lot of time, but you need to practice. Not once off that you see this now in, in the session and then you, you stop using your calculator or you stop practicing. You need to practice, practice, practice. Okay, the next one, calculate the coefficient of variation for the same data set. So you already have the data stored. 
all you just need to do is calculate the coefficient of variation. Those who don't have the data stored, remember we calculated the mean, we found that it was 100, calculated the standard deviation, and we found that it was 64.25. So what they are asking you now is to calculate CV, which is S divided by the mean multiplied by 100. That's it. We have the answer. This step is easy. Option one. Mm, six two, 64.25. And that would have been, I'm going to show you on the calculator as well, 64.25 divided by 100, multiply by 100, 100 and 100 will cancel and the answer will be 64.25%. So which is the same. I have my standard deviation divided by shift that for mean of 2 and multiply that by 100 equals 64.25. You still get the same answer. Same thing, I have my standard deviation divided by alpha 4, multiply by 100, and I still get the same answer. So that's how easy it is to use your calculator to calculate or find the measures of variation. And remember, these questions are like, uh, you get one question in the exam paper, which weighs about four marks. So why not save the time for more complex calculations at the later stage as well? Okay. Now you have a big data set. Calculate the standard deviation. So those who are going to use manual calculations because they don't know how to still know how to use their calculator. So your standard deviation formula is the square root of the sum of your observed value minus the mean squared divided by n minus one. So you can use that formula. If you're using a Casio calculator, you're going to press mode you're going to press the mode 2 1 mode two and one and your calculator will be ready to put in the data and then you can just put in your data 154 170 154 or 159 equal and you continue capturing your data so you're going to say 159 equal 170 equal 172 equal until you capture all the data until you get to 256 equal. So once you have captured your data, then you're going to press shift and you're going to press button number one. And then you're going to press button number four and then you're going to press button number four and that will give you your standard deviation those who are using a sharp you press mode and you press one 
and you press zero. And you say 159, then you capture your data, 159, and you will press M plus. Or those who are using the financial one, you say 159 and you press E and T. And you continue 170 M plus 170 E and T. And you capture all of the data set until you get to 256 M plus 256. ENT, and once you have captured your data, easy stuff, you're going to press alpha and then press button number five. And that will give you your standard deviation. And once you are done, you let me know what is the answer. I'm just going to go over on top of this. Yes. Number two. It says option two is the answer. So let's let me quickly do that on. I'm going to use. I'm going to use a Casio calculator quickly. So that will be 170 equal. 172. 73 equal. 192 equal 193 equal 199 equal 201 equal and I think the next one is 170 or 201. There are 201s, 2201s, 201 equal 201 equal 216 equal 217 equal 230 equal 235 equal and 250. Are they 15? Yes. yes. OK. Now we can calculate. I'm going to put it here. Since it's the case here, we've entered all the data set and we just. Press. Hi, Lizzie. Yes. Hello, Lizzie. Yes. Can you please uh, move the calculator from the data set? I'm still trying to calculate to enter the data. Uh, I'm still trying to see how to, to move it. It, it. it got stuck there. And I've got a thingy. Yeah, that is close. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so we use the step. It's shift. Oh, we can press the on and off button. Sorry, I bet. AC. I forgot the AC button in between there is a step. You can press the AC button and then you press shift. One. Four. And then four again and then equal. That's the other step that I forgot. So the equal part and the AC. AC part. And also here you need to press the AC. Here yeah, you press the on and off button. Yeah, you will go and press the on and off button, not the AC. Okay, so let's. When I open the cache one, the, the sharp one, it will hide the data. So bear with me. I'm gonna move it a little bit down, but I'll, I will use my laptop to capture the information. Don't worry. So let's second function CA to create the calculator 159. See now I cannot, I need to start first year. It doesn't allow me to use my number button on my laptop. So I will have to this way so 159 m plus 170 m plus 172 
and plus 173 and plus 192 and plus 193 and plus 199 and plus 201 and plus 201 and plus how many 201s? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I need another one. 201 and plus 216 and plus 217 and plus 230 and plus 235 and plus and the last one is 256 and plus and I have 15 of them and then we just need to press alpha five so alpha button number five and then equal 26.7 did we also get 26.7 happiness are you good or are you great um easy Mm -hmm. So we don't have to round it off to seven three because on the shop it gives me seven three. I'm on a on yeah. another you, 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 it also gives you, you can round it off to seven three. Um, but as I look at the options that we have here, number two is the only option that we have, which is twenty six point seven. Hmm. And this comes from tutorial past tutorial letters. So whoever wrote uh, this tutorial letters, um, they just decided to use only 2.67, not 2.673. But anyway, even if you round it off to to one decimal, you still get 2.67. Uh, because the number to the right is less than five. So it's still not going to make any difference. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I think this is one or two more last questions. Um, <clears throat> this is just a general question anyway, but I just want to also test to see if you still remember what you did the last time and what we did today. Consider the data set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 99. Which measure of central tendency is affected by the outline? Do you still remember? Which measure will be affected by outliers? I'm thinking the mean. It the will mean. be the mean. Yes, okay. definitely that it will be the mean. Calculate the standard deviation. Yeah, we still have two more questions. The daily electricity consumption in kilowatt by a sample of 10 households in Polukwani is recorded as follows. The standard deviation is, so you just need to find the standard deviation. The answer? Um, or should I wait a little bit? You can wait a little bit while others are still calculating. Okay. You are so quick, right? <laughs> I'm enjoying navigating around the calculator now. It's, oh. it's easy, yeah, it's easy. Even though I think the, the cashier, because now you can see how you're working. Mm. I'd like to see what I've, I've, um, I've input. Okay. Yeah.
Um, someone might ask, why am I always when I use the case to and not use the clear? You can use the clear button. There is a a, a clear button. Let me uh, see if I can. Uh, because I still have the data stored. So in order for me to clear that data set, I can use shift and then go nine and then it will clear all. Uh, probably it will, it will clear everything. I am not sure, but let's see. Oh no, it doesn't clear all. Um, and that is why the other thing, uh, I prefer not to use the, the case show. Let's see, shift, start, data is two. You see, it didn't clear the data set. So this doesn't work as well as I would have hoped it will do. And, and that is why I always start from from the beginning and that way it clears the calculator from any stored value and then I can capture again 51 and uh, 47 and uh, 40 8 and uh, 61 and uh, 55 and uh, 44 okay enter and 35 uh, didn't do enter which is equal you will see that my equal when i press enter because i'm navigating on my laptop and um, it presses the equal sign 35 equal okay and then on and off i will also do the same with the case you So I can have second or with the sharp uh, 51 and plus 47 and plus 40 and plus 37 and plus 43 and plus 48 and plus 61 plus 55 and plus 44 and plus and 35 and plus do you have your answers let's see what is the answer number two number two does anyone get a different answer to number two? Those who came in late, please remember to complete the register. I'm just going to repost it on the link because I can see we almost, almost, almost there. Okay, so on the case show, I've stored my data, then I can go find, we calculating the standard deviation, right? Shift. Start four, one, four, and four again, and equal. And the answer is 8.0753. On the sharp calculator, same alpha five equal, and you get the same answer. Okay, I hope by now you are comfortable with your calculators to do to answer any of these questions. Now, this is new data set. It's not the same as that one. So this one is for 10 households in Rustenbeck. You need to calculate the coefficient of variation. And the coefficient of variation, CV, is equals to your standard deviation divided by mean times hundred. So going to store the data while you also are storing your data.
Okay. Remember those who still don't know how to use your calculator. The mean is the sum of observation divided by n and your standard deviation is the square root of your observations. The sum of your observation, the sum of observation minus the mean squared divided by n minus 1. You can use those two formulas to find the values. And we can finish early today because this is the last. This is the last question. Do we have an answer? I'm going to calculate them manually now. Press AC, shift, that, four, four, equal. Then I have 8.718 divided by shift, that, four, two, equal. Multiply by a hundred equal. The answer is eighteen point two eight, which is which is number two, number one. Sorry, eighteen point two eight. Let's look at the sharp. Alpha five divided by alpha four multiply by hundred and the answer is eighteen point two eight. Those who are using an HP calculator, I just want to Pen H B. Um, H B uh, once is it once C one hundred H let's call it eight. Financial calculator. Uh, nope. Ten B one. That's what I wanted. Uh, these are the things that I want. H B ten I B Y, and you can say standard deviation. There we go. So you can look at. There is the video. You can go and look at how they calculate it. Let me just play it anyway because it's.
Okay, so that then clears up those who are using the the HP calculator. So remember, uh, the orange button, which has the arrow facing down. And I'm just want to go back to you. to your calculator. Remember the arrow facing down and see that that will clear your calculator from your memory. So you press the orange and then the see that and to capture the data. So you're going to use the sum. So you are going to put the value. So let's say we are using the this uh, this um, question, which is for 51, 47, 40, and so forth. So on your calculator, what you will do is you will say, uh, now I forgot the values now, 51, 47, 51, 47. So on your calculator, you will say 51, and then you will press the sum plus, and it will say one, and then, 47 and some plus and then it will say two so it will do the count like when we were using the the sharp calculator it was doing the uh, data set one data set two so yours will count one two three until you get to the number so there were 10 so until you get to 10 you will know that we've captured all the values now in order to calculate the mean the mean is on button number seven, you will press the orange button and press button number seven. It will give you the mean of that data set. And if you want the standard deviation, which is the sample standard deviation, you will press the orange button and you get the um, the uh, the um, the you will get the the standard deviation. Now, when we go and do the regression, because there are two of them on here, so you will use the swap for the mean of x and the mean of y you use the swap button and that is why i said i will send you also some um, manual but i think uh, you can also go to to youtube and just put in the type of a calculator that you have and say uh, mean or standard deviation or regression and they will give you all the steps that you need um, and that's it from me for today so let's go back to our presentation and we are right at the end of our session do you have any question any comment please remember to complete the register what do you think oh, oh yes you can yes yeah i just have one question just for clarity the yes. only thing that wouldn't be calculated on a calculator is the median. That is something that's still a, a manual yes. uh, calculation. Okay. Yes. Um, so um, there are calculators that can that can calculate. The next time I see you will be doing, I'm, I'm not sure, is it the quartiles? I think we'll be doing the quartiles. Yeah. There are Casio calculators these days or, sh or sharp calculators these days that can calculate the quartiles. Um, you need to be very careful with those type of calculators because they don't usually apply the same logic as they are required in your in your prescribed books as well. So yeah, but the median is the in terms of that calculator if, if you get that calculator they are the most expensive calculators you are able to calculate the median but for this calculators that i just showed you today and all that you can calculate the median and the and the mode using that uh, you will need to do that manual okay yeah. thanks all right so let's recap what we've learned today, we've learned how to calculate the measures of variation, the, which are the range, the uh, variance, standard deviation, and coefficient of variation. And we also learned how to use a calculator to calculate those measures of variation. And practice 
practice, practice, because from now on, you will be introduced to new formulas every now and then, every week. If you don't practice and learn some of these things, don't memorize, know them. And that way, because when you are practicing, you will know them and go through your your workbooks, your activities, find past exam papers, work through them um, on the concept that you just learned today as well and practice the activities and all that from those questions. And that um, will improve how you answer your questions in your statistics exams and your assignment as well. On that note, I hope um, for more detailed content in, uh, relating to measures of variation, your either your, your, your tutors or the workbooks that you get gives you more information because I know that most of you have um, e-tutors, you are linked to an e-tutor, so please make use of that space as well because I just concentrated on the skill. I didn't concentrate more. As you can see that I didn't even use um, the formula more often. I just wanted to show you how to use your calculator um, as a purpose of today's session while I introduce the measures of variation. But in terms of the content related to your module, please make sure that you attend your e-tutorials, you look at your workbooks, because I, didn't, I, I only scratched the surface. And so please do that so that you don't disadvantage yourself when you find questions in the exam that don't look exactly the same as what I have asked you. Um, and and also remember with statistics as well, they do ask questions um, around theory. Like we did some of the activities just to highlight and show you that you will not always get calculations, that some things that you need to calculate, but you will be asked um, about some theory of some sort to a certain extent. It might not be too many questions, but you need to know your theory as well. And don't just rely on these sessions and then say, oh, after I've attended the academic literacies, I don't have to do tutorials. Other than that, all the, the, the videos are on my YouTube as well that are tutorial videos that we go into detail, we explain things, we do lots more than what we do in the skills training. So you can also follow me on YouTube if you haven't already. Um, you know where to find the schedule on my, Unis on my UNISA. Uh, and the notes are also uploaded on, on there. Uh, I think, uh, what else you need to know? That's it. So if there are no other questions. Uh, Sis Lizzie. Yes, Justice. Where do we get the attendance register today? Oh, I did, didn't I post it on the chat? Sorry, I'm gonna repost it again. Um, I just, Posted so, right there. Um, so this each test you are talking about, we get them in my UNISA. I think so. And didn't you receive an email saying you are linked to an e tutor? No, I didn't receive it. Most of the first year modules are linked to e tutors. So you can just check. Usually, they are e the e tutor modules. Um. Let me see if I can get to my site. Uh, let's see. My units are right. Leslie, I don't even think I've started because I've been linked to a class and there's nothing happening there. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> so quiet. <laughs> Which module are you are you in? Uh, remember the e twitters yeah. are not doing like face to face twittering like I do. Like now they communicate with you via the the, the platform site. that you yeah. decide has a so it's set up but nothing's happening in there yet uh which which module are you are you 16 10 50, 15 or 16 16 one six uh what um, is the code for your module for your e tutor class because my e tutors <laughs> maybe you are in my maybe you are in my group I pull lazy. <laughs> and i, I am in that i mean statistics 1501 
Yeah, so you can see there is my, my this is this is my e Twitter uh, site. Um, as you can see that the students in my my tutorial site they should have already because I already started with them last week. I have already posted the announcement which they should have already received, which gives them all the information that they need to know about tutorial. So that is why I'm saying you need to check who is your e tutor. Um, and mostly your e tutor site will have a groups, a group. You can see that my the uh, lecture site is it ends with a Y. But my e Twitter site is start with an one e. So if you are in two e, three e, four e, you will know which Twitter you are or which Twitter site you are in. And then if your Twitters are not communicating with you, you need to send your lecturers an email to say, "But I'm linked to this Twitter, but they are not saying anything." So, but in terms of my sessions, like for example, I've already created the content for them, so they already they should have already started going through the information as as always. Um, Lizzie. Yes, I actually checked I'm in your class. I'm uh, sorry. Then, <laughs> then I'm very disappointed in you because. <laughs> yes, uh, everything's there. I checked. I uh, just checked now. Ah, uh, now you are killing me because <laughs> I put I go all out for my students. So no, please, please. Sorry. apologies, please. apologies. Yes. Um, and I'm still waiting for you guys to also respond to my messages because in there it says you need to complete some. If I go there, when can we have a session? Because I yes. rely on you responding and telling me. And telling me when can we have a session? So there we will have a one hour session on a Saturday or Sunday, but I need to know when. So you guys are not responding to me. So how am I supposed to if I give you all this? And yeah. So but I'm all I'm all I wanted to 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 say with regards to this is you need to check your e Twitter because your e Twitter will do things different to what I do. And you need to make sure that you attend your classes that your e Twitter is offering. I will, yeah, definitely those who are in my class, I will have e tutorial classes. But this year, I'm not going to have tutorial. Tutorial is going to be discussions because the content is already there. So I'm linking my videos, 30 minutes videos on on the online. So you need to go and watch those 30 minutes videos and then we can have discussions. Um, I'm going to do things differently this year. So if there are no questions, uh, I need to leave. I need to stop the recording as well. So just one question. Yes. Do you also have like um, you were saying you've got um, like a details expl explanation of the HP like um, Calculator. Calculators. Do yes. you have the same for the Casio ones or the sharp ones? Uh, you mean the uh, OK, so. Which module are you doing? Because one of the module, which I think it's 50, 1610, they do give you a um, I did share this, um, the information. There is a um, how to use how to use a calculator uh, content that I shared with the lecturers to include in the tutorial letters. So I know that one module they have included that information in one of the stacks. So in if you scroll through, the, there is a way it explains the Casio and the Sharp calculator. It gives you all that information. Do you have that? Do, do you know if the module have something like that? It it does, uh, but it's very very basic. Yes, the sixteen bit, sixteen and has it, yeah. Yeah, so fifteen ten, sixteen thirty, sixteen thirty. Mm. Yeah, so uh, um, I will I will check the documentation and then I will also load it where you will find your schedules. If you go to the schedules, let me also. It's one of the other things that people don't know where to find the thing. 
Um, so if you go to your schedules, uh, you will see that they, they have a notes and recordings. Um, there might not be any recordings. Oh, they are. But it starts on session one. They are nothing after that. So, but anyway, that's not the purpose of this. Um, there is a link here for open class notes. Um, so yours, it will be different. The view will be different to my one because I'm I an mean, uh, editor on this folder, but you will be able to see, oh, oh, I didn't load today's notes. I will load today's notes here. So I will also load on here the document on how to use your calculator for HP and for the other, the other one. I, I will need to go and search where did I store that it's somewhere. Um, but I will include it in here on the notes. So always the notes will be here. If you missed a class and you need notes, they will always be loaded onto here. You get them via the schedule and this button notes and recordings. Other than that, thank you very much for being part of today's session. And this is Lizzie. 